So now I'm back and I've got power to my telescope. I hooked my AC adapter into my extension cord and as we saw earlier the extension cord is hooked here into the telescope and I've turned it on and there's a little red light here. You might have heard the little beep that means it's on. Now I put my hand controller while we are offline into this little holder so I'm going to take it off and the first thing it does is say press zero to align so I'm going to press this zero down here and it says to enter the date. Now I'm going to zoom this in a little bit and hope you can see the date and everything. I don't know if you can or not but Today's date is September 13th, and I've already said it, but I'll show you how that's done again. I'm just going to type in 1, 3, 1, 3, and then I'm going to go up and down with these keys until that says October, that says September, that says August, and that says September again. Then I'm going to hit Enter. It says Enter the time. Now, I've, the time right now is 6.30 in my backyard, but we're going to pretend it's actually 8 o'clock which would be observing time at the Atoka site tonight if you went up to do some observing. And so I'm just going to let it be 8 p.m. So I'm going to hit enter in the paddle. And it says daylight savings time. Are we daylight savings time? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to hit enter. It wants to know what kind of method of polar alignment am I doing? Am I doing compass or am I doing true north? And we're going to do number one which is the true north version. So the first thing it wants me to do is set the telescope up in the north position. I'm going to zoom back out again, go back over to the telescope. The easiest way to do that is unloosen this knob and point the telescope at Polaris. And you can see the telescope goes like this, and it goes like that. So a, Par a Polaris is approximately there in my backyard, and we're just going to say it is, because it doesn't really matter right now. And so I'm going to lock this down like this. I'm going to look through the eyepiece to make sure Polaris is there, and since we think it is, I'm going to go ahead and lock this down. So this thing no longer moves left-right, which is azimuth. So the next thing it wants me to do is to set this in true, uh, home position. Home position to this telescope is level like this. I could actually use a level on here, but I don't have one right now. So I'm just going to pretend that it's good enough. And I'm going to lock this back down again so this doesn't go up and down. So the next thing I'm going to do is hit enter. And it says selecting the star. And as you can see, it's moving, it's rotating, and it's going to find the star Arcturus for us. And you'll hear it beep once it finds star. It actually says it's slewing. And if you heard that beep, that means the telescope has found Arcturus. Now, what it wants me to do is use these left and right and up and down keys to adjust the star until Arcturus actually shows up in the eyepiece. We're going to say it is. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to find another star. It's doing a two star alignment at this point. And right now it's looking for Altair, which is the star, southern star in the summer triangle with Deneb and Vega. And it's Altair is somewhere over in that general direction. And you'll hear it beep when it thinks it's found it. It's still slewing. And if you heard the beep, that means it's found it. After I've double checked and pressed the up and down left and right keys, I'm going to push enter. And it says alignment successful. Yay! So now we're going to double check the alignment. So I'm going to look, I'm going to press this button. Let's come around this way. There. I'm going to press this button that says mode. 
Gonna zoom in a little bit, see if that works. Press this button that says mode and it says object. And I'm gonna use these up and down keys until I find star. Glossary, utility, setup, object, event, guided tour, glossary, utility, setup, object. So I'm gonna enter object. And it's gonna live, give me a list of the various types of objects. So I'm going to hit the down key and I'm going to get solar system, constellation, deep sky, star, which is the one I want. So I'm going to press enter and I'm looking for a name star. In this case, we're going to go back to Arcturus so that we can verify that our alignment is correct. So I'm going to go down here and hit enter and I'm going to find Arcturus. There it says Arcturus. I don't, hope, I don't know if you can see this or not, but we'll try. So I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to hit go to, and you'll see the telescope is now going back around where it came from to find Arcturus. And so it's going back to its original position of where Arcturus was. And if Arcturus is in the eyepiece, which it should be once it beeps, it's still slewing. Slewing. Still. And there's the beep. That means we found Arcturus. Now, obviously Arcturus is not up, so we're going to say this is fine. So I'm going to double check one more time. And I'm going to find another named star, which in this case will be Polaris. We're going to go back to the North Star just one more time, just to verify our alignment. This is not actually strictly necessary. It just happens to be what I do just to make myself feel comfortable that my alignment has been correct. And there it is, Polaris. Uh, whoops, wrong button. Polaris. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that, but it says Polaris. I'm going to zoom this back out. I'm going to hit enter and I'm go to. And you can see it's now moving again. It's now bringing itself back to point to straight north to the North Pole, to the Pole Star. And as soon as it beeps, and it's still slewing, and it's still slewing. Sometimes it thinks a little bit. There was the beep, so that means it's found Polaris. You can verify that by looking through the eyepiece. From now on, you can just go about your observing business. This, this is the brains of the telescope. It does all the up and down, left and right, which is ultimate and altitude adjustments. It's got a list of constellations, deep sky objects, Messier objects, Herschel objects, double stars. It's got an amazing list of things in here. It will do you guided tours. Uh, you don't have to do anything once you set it up. But I will say it takes several tries to get to this level of being able to do it without being thinking about it very much. And just in case I didn't mention it, and I may have in the previous half of this video, this is an 8-inch telescope with an F10 optical system on an alt azimuth mount, and you must have this hand controller for it to work, otherwise it's basically a useless piece of paperweight. And that is how you set up an LX90 telescope. One thing else I might mention is once you've done this alignment, you don't want to change this and you don't want to change that. If you do that, your polar alignment is going to be out of whack. Do everything that you need to do using the hand controller. If you want to go left or right, there are controls here that allow it to go faster and slower by pressing buttons on the keypad. And Basically, 
once you've learned it and gotten used to it, it'll take two or three nights to get fully comfortable with using it. You'll feel very happy that you've got it and it'll find all sorts of stuff with you. It's especially good for in-town observing with public session with kids or something. You may not be able to find something easily in a regular telescope with the go-to function on this telescope. You can easily find uh, the ring nebula, uh, the, the, the double cluster, anything that's bright enough to be seen if you could just find it, but you don't exactly can't find it conveniently with a telescope. Once the go-to is set up properly, it will find it for you and make that kind of activity very easy and convenient for you. And that's the end of this presentation. Thank you very much for watching.